Well, ladies and gentlemen, Jared Brockhammer has a hit, and it keeps getting crazier and crazier with these characters every week. That damn Jackie is off the chain, literally. If you can get past that horrible opening song, Jerry Brockheimer, please change that next season because this is not Saved by the Bell. If you're finding us for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to join us live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night. The Black Avengers of Current Culture and Life Games, me and the fellas. And be sure to check out Shop Life Games to get the t-shirts to keep this movement going. This show, ladies and gentlemen and honey, started out with Jackie hungover drunk because she decided to dip her lips in the abyss of alcohol last week. And she thought she had slept with homeboy right here that in last in the last episode said, let me get some of that. <laughs> what you think was up? What you think was up when they first showed his penis? Did you think she had done something with him? I mean, who knows? She I, blacked out. She don't know what she did the night before. So. He, he said that nothing happened. Uh-huh. So and he seemed like he's a he's a he's a worthy, honest individual. Well, why is he laying there just but <laughs> because they got hammered together. Yeah, I guess. They got slammed together. Mm -hmm. But what was the point of this whole scene was Jackie somehow or another got her phone dipped in water. Uh -huh. And then he told her to just throw it in some rice and that's how you can dry it. But they also were showing how Jackie is now having to do all these crazy things to get over her hangover. Throwing up yeah. Gatorade in the in the um toilet. She done got her phone wet and she's dipping it in rice to try to dry it. Um, Jackie's just a pure mess. And then finally have to just go and get another drink to, 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 to sober up. herself up. Yeah. yeah. Um, that is truly the sign of an addict, ladies and gentlemen. Truly the sign. And what, yeah. was, you, what was you gonna say about Jackie? It also highlights how irresponsible she is. Mm -hmm. She, I guess you have this struggle between her still wanting to party and also trying to be responsible and help Chris out. Right, so right. So you're supposed to be available knowing that this girl is going to call you, but you get hammered the night before, and then your means of communication is completely wiped out because you were irresponsible the night before and messed your phone up. Right, so. right. Which is the struggle of young people, ladies and gentlemen, the struggle of a college student. This lady is not a college student. This lady is a full-fledged career right. Marine police person that's supposed to be out there on that water checking the size of Lobster's penis. She too grown for all that. Yeah, she, she just way gone. Then we see Officer Saberho. He's in a meeting with a district attorney because he now knows where Aceto hangs out at. Aceto hangs out at his girlfriend's father's garage and they want to wiretap it. And she's like, nope, nope. Why do you think she's saying no to this, Crystal? Because it's illegal. I mean, <laughs> Her to bend the rules, and apparently she ain't falling for it. But this is what he's known for. As, as the district attorney said, he's known for being reckless. Yeah, she said she ain't going down with him. Nah, and, and black dude, the black officer, his partner. his partner, is like, bro, I'm gonna have your job. Mm -hmm. And I like his role because he's keeping him on a straight and narrow. Got the voice of reason. Yeah, he's pulling yeah. him back in. Next scene, we see Officer Sabaho, his name is Ray, pulls up at the um auto shop where he knows Aceto's hanging out to talk to the owner. Now at this point in time he's beating his chest, talking to the owner saying we can do this and I can do that and you need to work with me and I'm thinking dude you better get your ass whipped. Mm -hmm. But we learned that that was all a ploy as he walks back to the car with his partner and they're bugging the area illegally. Putting cameras up in the area. Right, yeah. right. Well they wanted to bug the inside. And district attorney said no. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she said that he could do it outside or not. Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. And I thought this scene was over the top too. Because mm -hmm. he went in there too macho, beating his chest too much, and basically trying to put them on blast, threatening them mm -hmm. um, by calling ICE and telling him, you're going to work for me in front of all these other people. Like, how are you going to get somebody to work for you? <laughs> And you got an audience of people watching you tell him he's going to work for you. And, he, so, and you know what? He sat there. And he let him speak till he was done. Very level-headed, very yep. calm, and then told him. But after that, he got yeah. in that ass. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like, know. you ain't intimidating nobody. I don't know who you think you're fooling with, S.A. But I'm glad that, uh, you know, it was a ploy, because the whole scene was over the top. It was, yeah. I'm like, are you, this is how you really act, uh, what? 
Bro, who, who you think? You think you're Superman I, now, huh? Yeah, you ain't gonna get uh, nothing done like that. Yeah. But, like you said, the whole mission was to distract them while they were hanging cameras outside. And it worked well. <laughs> then we see Junior go back to jail. But the reason Junior went back to the jail to talk about his sobriety was because he brought Aceto with him so they could get a moment with Frank. Mm -hmm. This scene, I kind of started to get the feeling that Frank is having some dissension with Aceto too. Because Frank is worried about this girl. Mm -hmm. He's worried about Krista. Um, and at the very end of this conversation and exchange, he grabbed Aceto by that big peanut head and said, look, bro, you need to handle this business. Mm -hmm. What did you think was the outcome for that particular scene? I mean, it, it tells you who is who has the power right mm -hmm. now, and Frank has the power. It was kind of interesting watching the dynamic between him and Aceto. Mm -hmm. um, I thought Aceto was like a, a bigger man than that, or I didn't think he was that that low on or, the totem pole, or be bossed around that much by Frank. But we already know that. Aceto was a chess player. Mm -hmm. He could just be sitting back taking it for now and he's like plotting, you know, in his mind. Could be. Um, could so I don't be. think, I definitely, even watching him interact with Frank, I didn't think Aceto was what's as weak as Frank thinks he is. I think he's just sitting back taking Playing it. Playing a role. Yeah, I Playing think he's just role. taking it for now and eventually he's gonna strike get back. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Then we see some old dude trying to throw some dollars at Krista, and Krista is really feeling it right now. I mean, she done got back on drugs, too. She's living in this hotel. Her sugar daddy done kicked her to the curb. She's hurting for money, and obviously she takes this guy's money, does whatever, she gets her some drugs, what may have you. But what was significant in this scene was, after all that, she got to thinking, maybe I should call this lady that's trying to help me. And she did call our girl Jackie and leave her a message. Did you think she was going to ever call Jackie? I thought she was just going to, I thought she wasn't going back to the hotel room. Okay. When she okay. first, you know, realized that somebody was, <laughs> knew where she was, she left in a hurry. I was surprised to see her go back to the hotel room, period. Mm -hmm. um, and now she's again in a desperate place. Um, don't really want to stay in the drug game or whatever. Um, and so she reached out to Jackie. And of course, Jackie, if she knew who she was calling, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> she called the wrong one she for help. She called the wrong person. <laughs> she yeah. called in trouble thinking she's going to get right, help. <laughs> right. She had to have an addict going to show up at the door and drunk trying to help her out. It's like the blind leading the blind, <laughs> oh, huh? Goodness. Then we see Jackie is hanging out back at the boardwalk. And y'all know this is a party town. Um, it's a very LGBT friendly town. And she's talking to the DJ, who's her friend, giving her a drink. Jackie's still drinking. And then this girl the DJ is hitting on walks up, and they sweating this girl like she, God sent her down, beauty and all from heaven. I'm sitting here telling my wife, <laughs> she looked like Jigsaw. She got the face of Jigsaw, and they talking about the girl got a fat ass. And Crystal, did you see anything but a, a book on her butt? Nothing. But that whole, that whole little exchange was to let us know that these three women are going to be in cahoots for a little right. while. They're going to be supplying Jackie with the things she needs, and they're going to get in some real trouble. Yeah, I thought there was either going to be some competition initially between the two. I thought the girl was going to either create a rift between the two of them, mm -hmm. or all three of them were going to hook up. Eventually. Yeah, yeah, make it, make it a menage a trois. Mo, Larry, and Curly. Mm -hmm. Female version. Then we see Officer Saberho. He t Why he always showing up at the club? What kind of investigator are you? You showing up at the place of work of your CI. Who, mm -hmm. You don't know who the hell looking. Yeah, who paying getting, attention? Then getting irritated when you see her talking to another guy. Right. Which which we're going to have to highlight that too at some point in time. Which one of these two is falling for the other one the most? Who's playing who? Yeah, who's playing who the most? This episode, I feel like Officer Saberho really has gotten back to the point where he's really trying to use her. And she's getting to the point where she's getting more emotional about him. But, dude, stop showing up at this chick place of work, man. You're going to get her killed. And then we see our girl Jackie. Lord, poor Jackie. She, first of all, she missed the opportunity to call this girl and let her know what was going on with the phone. So she had to borrow somebody's phone and let her know what's up. She goes and meet this girl who she really says the love of her life, all these good things. And the girl realizes Jackie played her again because she showed up high and drunk. Mm -hmm. High on coke and drunk. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of all that, when the girl basically says, Jackie, get the hell out of my life, what does Jackie do? <laughs> right there on the spot, go get another drink. Right in front of her, yeah. 
So she's she's fully back in. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, Jackie should have known she wasn't gonna be able to fool this lady. When you are, I guess, in a relationship and when you know someone who's in <laughs> deep like that, mm -hmm. you can see them coming from a mile away when they high or when they drunk. Right. Just as, by the way, she probably knew Jackie was messed up when she walked up to the table before what? she even sat down. Did you see how she called Jackie out? She was like, I put on all my makeup, yeah. put on my Sunday's best, you come in here in flip flops, mm -hmm. holy jeans, a yeah. damn dirty ass t-shirt, no makeup, no nothing. Right. Breath smelling like alcohol. Yeah. Eyeballs got cocaine dripping from them and all kinds of mess. Yeah. And that was enough for her. I mean, she's like, I'm Hopefully. done. Hopefully. We'll see. Hopefully you, it's enough for her. You know how love is when somebody put it on your good fashion, mm -hmm. everything else after that dictates. After a while it gets tired. So hopefully this is her, you know, her, her, her note to Leave it alone for good. We'll see. From there, we see Officer Saberho pulls up at Renee's crib because they got a little date scheduled, right? And Renee is all sad because her mom stood her up. Her mom's not going to be able to babysit. In real, I'm going to reel her in fashion. He done threw the bait out there in that ocean, got that big mouth bass named Renee, reeling her in. He knows a weak spot for her and a lot of women is a single parent with a child, a woman with a child trying to date. If you can show that you like the child, that really ingratiates yourself with a lot of women. That strokes the emotional side, which usually leads to us getting into the panty draw side. So what does he say? Don't worry about it, I'm gonna take you to this. And then the son says, is that something that's not girly? And what did he say? He lied to the son. It's about dirt. <laughs> he just, just straight lied to the son, man. And of course, Renee is all thrilled that he's going to do this. And we're just going to have to see where that goes. Then we see Jackie back in the club again because she's depressed that her homegirl done dissed her, right? She takes this girl's cell phone, goes in the bathroom to try to call her ex back. And the ex is not picking up the phone. Leaving drunk voicemails. Yeah, leaving voicemails. Drunk voicemails. Now, which is another sign of someone who's an addicted at it. Mm -hmm. But while she's doing that, this chick is just going through the club, Jackie, taking drinks from people. Took the girl drink out her hand, then she ran up on this white dude, took his drink right. out her hand. So first, she took a drink that was sitting next <laughs> to the In the bathroom. bathroom. Yeah, right. so she leaves out the bathroom, look down, see drinks, yep. and just start picking up drinks. Pick up that one. Yeah, then she uh. went and picked up the white dude drink, then she getting about to get into a, a melee in the club. Right. Jackie is balling out of control, man. Yeah. I'm sorry, she annoyed me this episode. <laughs> I mean, it's, they, they're showing you, they're showing her spiral out of control mm -hmm. again. Right. And it, it, it was annoying to me because I want her to advance get, the line of trying together. to help this yeah. girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trying to get it. There, there are three characters in this series, right? Four, really, that they've got, besides their professional careers, they've got some deep personal issues they need to fix. Jackie, um, Ray, Junior, and um, for sure, Krista. Those three characters got some deep issues they need to fix. So now getting back to Ray and Renee. <laughs> They're out on this date watching the lawn, you know, doing the social distancing thing on the lawn, watching the movie, got the sun out there. She's talking that good talk, sweet nothings in his ear. And he up there just turning the gas on. She was like, so you don't eat or indulge in sweets? He's like, no, I don't do that at all. And I'm like, bro, shut the hell up. You don't eat no sweets, no dirty food. And then she says, when you're with me, I want you to cheat. Act like it's Christmas. Yeah. And then she puts her milkshake in his face and he sips on it so suck it Okay. And then y'all know what happened after that. <laughs> Then we get back to Aceto. So they done kind of put that on the back burner for a minute. He goes to Frank in jail. Frank said, get rid of Krista. And also Jackie, let's not forget, Frank said, get rid of Jackie too. And Junior's fighting that a little bit. Mm -hmm. The plan here is they go meet up at his uncle's house. And when this little girl came to the door, I, I was like, damn, that's his daughter. That's what I, I was like. His daughter I was, but it's not, it's his cousin or whatever. And his, his uncle is Larry of Junior because it's like punk ass white boys don't come to the hood. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they go there to get this super strong cocaine so that they can have the death of Crystal like an overdose, right? Mm -hmm. But while he's there, something that I think you should pay attention to was, why is this cousin keep looking back at them as the uncle is saying, do we need to double cross Frank? Yeah. You know, we don't have to use him as a connect because I got another connect. Yeah. And 
you said what you said about Aceto, he basically kind of sounds like he's kind of entertaining it, but just not now. Mm -hmm. Just not now. Yeah, they featured that girl too much when they kept zooming in on her expressions a little too much. Right, so. right. She's up to something. She might be an informant for somebody for all we know. And then they get back to the scene where it's Jackie <laughs> and the Three Stooges all in the house plotting. They give Jackie some cocaine. And why is Jackie telling everybody about Krista's business? Right. So she tells these three chicks about Krista's business. And one homegirl's like, the girl that looks like Jigsaw's like, let's go find her. Rescue mission, right? Yeah. We're going to go save that hoe too and bring her in our group is what she's going to do. And so these chicks is off on a mission to go get Krista. Lord have mercy. With Jigsaw leading the way. Then we get to the very next scene where we see Ray, Officer Sabaho, comes back home with Renee and her son and doing, doing the most, just putting gas on this relationship, bro, lets her son pee on him while he sleep and says, no, no, it's okay. It's just child pee. I drink that for vitamins. It's just child tea. And Renee is just, you see the look on her face. She's just, oh, oh, you're so sweet. Oh, <laughs> Yo, you're just a loving man. You really love him. That's why I say, I think in this episode, it looks like they're trying to turn the tide to say that Renee is falling for him more than he's falling for her. He's the one pulling the string and using Right, and then they get in bed and, you know, they do the filthy McNasty. Following that scene, we see these three stooges, Jackie, um, her friend that runs the bar, and we don't know what, let's call this butterfly face because she had the butterfly things on. They're all in the back of the Uber, mm -hmm. going nuts. Now, you know, this This brought tears to me because I used to be a cab driver for a college town. So I know how this mess go on. They back there doing drugs, drinking, and then Jackie lights up a cigarette. Uber driver's like, hell to the knob. Right. Y'all getting out. So Jackie was about to fight them, but eventually they did get out. And when they got out, <laughs> they letting the girl with the colorful shoes do all the leadership. She's like, well, I'm just going to use my phone, get another car, and I guess we'll go back home. Mm -hmm. Jackie really wants to go get up with Krista, because yeah. that's where they was going in the first place. They're like four miles or so up Four the road. miles away from Krista. Uh -huh. And if little, if you know y'all could have done something that could have really helped that girl. And you know what? All three of them would have been up in the room with Krista mm -hmm. when, when Junior knocked on the door, and Jackie right. would have been looking like, what are you doing What here? the hell is up with you? Right. Yeah. And so the very next scene is Junior... Pulls up to Krista. Junior and Aceto pull up to Krista's hotel. Knocks on the door. He lies to Krista. And for whatever the reason, she didn't put up enough resistance. I guess the reason was because she needed her fix. Mm -hmm. He shows her this pure drug. And what she do, she gets to mixing it, fixing it, burning it like crack. Sticks the end filter of a cigarette in it. Puts a needle in there. Sucks it down. Then she starts getting the heebie-jeebies. Because he's sitting there staring at her. Yeah, like, come, Junior. Yeah. Ju Ju Junior does not have a good poker face. Mm -hmm. He needs to go. And so Junior's just sitting there staring. She wants him to get out. He starts beating her. And he guess who pops? He didn't guess, beat her. No, no. She starts beating him. To get him out. And then guess who pops through the door? Aceto. And when that happened, we already knew what time it was. Aceto won't play it. Mm -hmm. So they throw her on the bed. <laughs> And she's able to kick Junior off of her, who crushes the needle that they was going to use. So Aceto's like, F. So he throws Krista on the floor, grabs an iron, and went to town with an iron on her head. On her head. Oh. I didn't think that she was dead, but... That was so... It was good. gruesome. Oh, good. It was gruesome. But the problem was, these two buffoons probably left evidence in that room. Yeah. It's like, I didn't want her to die, but if you had to choose either between Junior's way yeah. of having her overdose or getting bashed in the head by Aceto, mm -hmm. it's like, Junior, why didn't you just do your job? Do your job, <laughs> Junior. Damn it, Junior, you worthless yeah. piece of mess. Or, you know, I was hoping that she would, he would warn her to take just enough to make her go to sleep with Aceto think she was dead, but she wasn't really dead. No. J Junior gonna die. I'm telling Junior ain't worth three cents. He can't think for himself. He ain't got no backbone. He's a spineless squid. He's going to die. Now, I was surprised, again, that they killed, well, yeah, that they killed her. So early. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then we see Officer Sabaho, who's waking up from a phone call while he's in bed with Renee. That phone call is the police finding out that Krista is dead in that bedroom. I mean, in that hotel. 
And the next thing we know, we see, <laughs> this is funny. We see Jackie waking up with the Three Stooges and one of them had a penis strapped on and Jackie, they, Jackie's looking dead at it like, ew. And then she she gets, gets up, goes back to her house, pulls her phone out of the rice. And guess what? It's working. Checks her voicemail, Krista called her. So she's happy, she's excited. She's thinking, I'm about to save this girl. No, she called uh, Krista's phone. Yeah, Chris, she called Ray Krista's phone. phone. Ray answered the phone and told her she's dead. But one thing that they try to slip through there that me and you said in the middle of the show, look at that. Junior fingerprint is gonna be all over that syringe. All over it, all over it. They, I think they intentionally didn't show what happened to the iron. Yeah. So we don't know what happened to the iron, but we know damn well Junior had his fingerprints all on that all on that needle. Mm -hmm. So he's good as gone. He's gonna they're gonna put the squeeze on him. All right. So overall, that was the end of the episode. It ended with Jackie just falling to the floor, crying, probably thinking to myself, "I'm just a big fuck up. Mm -hmm. I messed this. I messed it up with my girlfriend. I messed this up with Krista because I didn't start drinking and doing drugs again. She mm -hmm. could have saved this whole situation. Right." So now one thing they didn't and maybe it's just me still holding out hope that they're gonna carry the storyline story line forward with Krista. Mm -hmm. But um they didn't show Krista's body. No, she's dead, Krista. We've seen Ray no, lie before. Now he no. lied about but the, the, he lied about his partner he being, did. being like paralyzed, whatever, from that guy. He did. So I'm thinking like could he have lied to He he there's no way he could have orchestrated this. They had the crime tape up. So they had the crime tape up. They had the exhibits of evidence numbers up. Chris uh, is gone. There ain't there. This ain't no falsehood on this one. Chris see. is gone. I'm and the reason now hope. And the reason why Krista is gone is because now they're gonna shift the focus to Jackie, mm -hmm. because now Jackie's the only other link left that needs to be eliminated. And the issue with this is gonna be Jackie Junior has a sweet spot for Jackie. Mm -hmm. He's not gonna want to do it. So that's going to put him at odds with Aceto and Frank. And I eventually believe at some point in time, Aceto is going to be at odds with Frank because he's going to hook up with his uncle and be like, El Aceto, we can go with these people and, and take care of the whole coast. Mm -hmm. But you don't need Frank. Yeah. And I wind up believing and thinking that at the end of this whole entire season, when all these things are in chaos, Jackie's not dead. Junior's probably dead. Aceto's breaking away from Frank. And Renee might be getting in too deep with Officer Save a whole Ray. They're probably going to release Frank from jail. That's how they're going to end this season. I can see that. Watch that. Yeah. So let us know what you guys think. It's a great show. You definitely should be watching it. Just rewind right on past that stupid song. Fast forward. Fast forward right on past that song because that song is a mess. But if you look at what's going on in the in the visuals while they playing the song, it's a happy song, but they got people sticking a middle finger up at the camera. They got pills and drug <laughs> busts and stuff. So the what you are seeing has nothing to do yeah. with what you're hearing. And, and, so. <laughs> and it definitely has nothing to do with the show unless they're just simply talking about the happy times of the show when people are partying. Or it's supposed to be a happy town, but yeah. you don't. You, this is what's really going on. In the background. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that that could be the point of the show. But Jerry the Brockheimer, yeah. um, get another theme song. <laughs> That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, get yourself that life game. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, DM me with shows. Next week, we're going to be doing this show, plus the shy comes back on. Follow us on our live stream that we do every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night. And don't forget to continue to support the movement by going to shoplifegames.com, grabbing you one of these t-shirts. And until that next sex is hell video, we'll see you.